Sometimes we wonder if there is no one around to help us with what we're going through. Sometimes not even our family cannot be found. Our best friend can't be there and there, here and there at the same time. But thank God. I have somebody with me to share my heavy load. I feel his presence near me every day. I want somebody to sing with me. Though troubles overtake me, a long life weary road. Yes, I have some. God, Jesus. Oh, I have somebody with me to share my heavy load. I feel his presence near me every day. Though troubles overtake me, a long life we will roll. Yes, I have somebody with me all the way. Sing that song, choir. Come on. I have somebody with me. Share my heavenly Lord. I feel his presence every day. Though troubles overtake me, a long life we will roll. Yes, I have some. One more time, one more time. I have somebody with me to share my heavy load. Feel his presence near me every day. Oh, troubles take me along life we go. Yes, I have somebody with me. And you know what? You know what? You know what? He's able. He's able, I know He's able, oh I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Can you sing that song? He's able, He's able, I know He's able, I know my Lord is able to carry me through. To hear the broken hearted, to set the captives free. To make the lane to walk again, goes the blind to see. I know he's oh hallelujah. Oh praise the name of Jesus. He's able. I know he's able. Oh my Lord is able to carry me. Tell somebody again. Tell somebody again. He's able. He's able. I know he's able. I know my Lord is able to carry me through. Oh, oh, to hear the broken heart and he set the captives free he made the lame to walk again cause the blind to see oh glory I know I know you know what sister Ruby that's it you know what Ruby sister Ruby that's it Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder, oh hallelujah, you are brighter than the morning star, you are fairer, much fairer than the lily that grows by, you are precious, you're precious than gold, oh sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder, you are brighter than the morning star. Brighter than the star. She you are fairer. Much fairer than the lily that falls by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. Oh, sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. What a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning Star, you are fairer, much fairer, and the lily that goes by the way, you are precious. It's time I'm working with you. Come on, come on, come on, put your hands, put your hands together. Oh, what a mighty God! We, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we 
answer oh what a mighty god we put your hands together church of god put your hands together come on what a mighty god we serve angels more heaven and earth what a mighty god we serve oh what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve angels bow before him heaven and earth adore him what a mighty god the god i My life on earth is ended. I'm gonna say goodbye. I'm gonna say goodbye. Oh, I'm Papa, Papa. Oh, my life on earth is ended. Somebody clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus. Shout a hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. 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 Let us stand. Trust His grace. I'll count on Him.
comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. For she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. The universe is God's house. In his house are many rooms. Death pushes aside the portier that we may pass from one room to another. According to an anonymous, anonymous writer, it is also said that death is a Christian, death to the Christian is the funeral of all his sorrows and evils and the resurrection of all his joys, according to Orgy. We are gathered here in this August assembly to join in the celebration home going service for the life of Ruby Joyce Knight, otherwise known as Saibi, Sister Ruby, Aunt Ruby, to many persons. I want to first of all acknowledge our General Secretary of the New Testament Church of God in the person of Bishop Jafito Reed who is seated on the platform also Bishop Orville Plummer Director of the Ministerial Care and Development of the New Testament Church of God in Jamaica. I want to recognize members of the Executive Council and their spouses that are here. Bishop Cornel Shaw, former pastor of this church, immediate former pastor of the church at Cobbler. Other visiting ministers and their spouses want to also recognize my spouse, Sister Gooden, the first lady of this local church. Want to recognize maybe visiting ministers that are seated in the pew and affiliated church workers. My brothers, my sisters, friends, visitors from near and far, and also by way of extension across the seas via the international web. Let us stand at this time as we sing our opening hymn. All the way my Savior leads. I want to express condolences on behalf of myself and the rest of family to the Knights family and from the Cobbler Church family. This is the passing of your loved one. 
know that our prayers are with you. All the way my Savior leads me, what a path to God's beside. Can I doubt His tender mercy, who to life has been my God? I faith in him to dwell, for I know what there befall me, Jesus knoweth all things well, for I know what there befall me, Jesus knoweth all things well. Savior leads me, Jesus' winding path I tread, gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Oh, my way will stand with altar, cause my soul a thirst in me. Rushing from the walk before me, Lord, speak of joy I see. Rushing from the walk before me, Lord, speak of joy I see. All the way, my Savior. of his love perfect rest to me is promised in my father's house above when my spirit clothed me mortal by his misplied to rest of me is my soul This my song to endless ages, Jesus give me all the way. This my song to endless ages, Jesus lend me all. We are about to be having the invocation at this time. And we are a part of the celebration of a woman of God whose name was not Ruby Knight, but whose name was Prior. Whose name was Prior. Consistent persistent church worship service Monday to Saturday night prior we're going to be asking Bishop Everton Robinson to do the invocation praise the Lord I feel so honored and yet so unworthy to stand and pray in light of someone like Sister Ruby Knight whose name and life was prayer everything about her was prayerful nevertheless I ask you to join with me and at this time to pray a special prayer in your hearts for the family of the deceased at this time Father in heaven we come to you give you we're giving you thanks and praise today 
for your grace and your mercies that even now they are bound to us we woke up this morning to them Lord we owe you a debt of gratitude that we cannot repay but Lord we think that it might suffice for us to start by saying thank you thank you for bringing us here and giving us this opportunity to celebrate the life of our deceased sister Ruby Knight Lord you blessed us with her for the time that you loaned her to us but we're always aware your word declares the Lord gives and the Lord take it away your name is worthy to be praised she has touched many lives directly and indirectly by your strength your power you enabled her to move oh God in such a special way in the lives of so many Lord all of us are here today those who are here in this building on the outside those who are watching or listening over the waves we have all gathered today and Lord we have paused from our daily activities to offer you thanks and to give you praise for a life loaned to us a life that was well lived a life that was lived in dedication to the creator of such life thank you Lord for Ruby Knight thank you for her legacy thank you for her children and grandchildren thank you for all those whose lives are better today because of the influence and touch of a ruby night Lord today we ask you to guide us throughout these proceedings and we pray that you would do only what you promised Lord in the Beatitudes Lord you promised and we are reassured today in your word blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted you comforted so many while you were on earth but Lord before you left you promised the comforter oh and the spirit of God came and is here with us today spirit of the living God let your peace or oh, rest remain in the hearts of those who mourn today let your peace which passeth all understanding God, our hearts and our minds today that we will remain steadfast that we will not lose hope oh God touch the children Lord every tear that falls from their eyes today we pray God that you would bring the comfort Lord that Lord God Almighty with he which will heal and soothe their brokenness Lord God may they receive strength even this very minute to know Lord that they can make it for their mother their grandmother a wife Lord God a, a godmother a church mother a prayer mother oh she did her part she exited the stage and we are left to take pages from her book and live in accordance with your word that we too can meet up with her on the other side have your way today we pray as we give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise in Jesus name let everybody say amen since we started the director for the Evangelism and Home Missions Department, Reverend Ray Robinson, step inside and we want to welcome him. Sir. Also, Reverend C.G. Clark was just taking his seat on the platform and the Sister Clark, we acknowledge and we do welcome them. Amen? We are going to be having the scripture reading at this time and it is going to be done by the second generation of Sister Ruby Knight after which we'll be having the 
acknowledgement by Bishop O.D. Knight, son. Then the scripture readings come to us from Psalm 90, reading from verse 1 to 12. Here beginneth. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thine wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thine wrath. We spent our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten, and if by reason of strength we are before score years, of God's holy word, we honor it by saying, Thanks be to God. We're going to bypass the acknowledgments that is on our programs and move ahead to a special song. And after this special song, we are going to be having tribute to be done by Bishop O. Plummer, representing the administrative bishop. And we, are, we will be just in time for the eulogy. And it will be done by Mrs. Jacqueline Gooden, dear friend. We are going to be having a special song at this time by Sister Judith Robinson Edwards. Before I do my item, my aunt Althea from the United States of America, that's Auntie Ruby's niece, I'm grandniece, she's niece, she sent her tribute and I would like to read it before I sing. Greetings in the name of Jesus to family and well-wishers on behalf of Althea and family. We send our condolences. Sorry I'm not able to, to be there, but my spirit is there. Aunt Ruby, my second mother, a virtuous woman of God, a special woman. She was amazing. Every Sunday, I would receive a call from her, and she would give me words of wisdom and encouragement. She was also a prayer warrior. She, left, she has left a legacy behind. I am a product of that legacy. How can I forget her potato puddings and cut cakes? I know that she has gone she has gone to be with her God. My aunt, take your rest. I am, I am going to meet you someday. I hope to see you back one day in glory, Althea and family. And from my family, we want to extend condolences to, to the Knight's family. We, we really, really, well, I really, really, I know, really really miss aunt ruby 
she was a person who I could call on whenever I'm at church, we're having little troubles down there, I can't manage it. I call up Auntie Ruby and she would pray with me. I can't forget that I, whenever I go to her, she would make sure that I have my bag going back home with, with my yam, potato, whatever it is she and Uncle Ezra can find. They would make sure that I have something to take back. And I'm so, I'm, I'm going to really, really, really miss her. But in this hour, we give God thanks for her life. And the songwriter says, why should I feel this courage? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and longing for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he's watching over every one of us this, this afternoon. Praise God. Christians, they never die. They only, they only say goodbye. Auntie Ruby is not dead. She only say goodbye. Should we feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? And why should our hearts be lonely and long for heaven? Spot 
Bring your greetings on behalf of the administrative bishop, Dr. W. A. Blair. Bishop Blair would like me to pay tribute on behalf of not just himself, but the entire New Testament Church of God for the life and legacy of Sister Ruby Knight. Just by the showing of the ministry, that is here today, members of the executive council, heads of department, retired ministers, local pastors, and just a host of church workers is a testament of our appreciation for her own life and really to recognize her for her tremendous contribution to the life and ministry of the New Testament Church of God. Bishop would like to offer condolence to Brother Knight and the entire Knight's family. Seem like we have all, almost four generations going back, but to really offer condolence to the entire family. You would have been much aware that Bishop Donovan Knight is not just a member of the Church of God, but he is one of the 12 elected bishops elected to assist the administrative bishop in overseeing the church. And for that reason, the bishop would very much would have loved to be here. But in respect of paying tribute to Sister Knight, we are aware of the time, bishop identify three qualities that he want to identify and highlight in Sister Ruby and those would have been 
said before and will be even be said after. One is a tribute to her life of prayer. A tribute to her life of prayer. We would have heard right throughout the service that she was a prayer mother, a prayer warrior, and all other words. But every time you mention a word, it's the adjective that comes before it is prayer. It is not well known, but it is recorded that back in the days, very often, regularly, she will visit Bethel Bible School and pray, I understand it, with the principals there and also with the students. She was a woman of power, not just for her own children, but for the church, the pastors who pastored her, the young people, and other members of the community. Oh, we wish we could have in this time some more Sister Ruby, some more prior mothers, some more prior warriors who will sincerely pray. We salute her not just for her life of prayer, because sometime we know in the Pentecostal realm, prayer could be just an outward expression. But we know she was balanced not because just because of her life of prayer, but because of her parenting. Bishop would want to salute her as one of the exemplary parent that the Church of God has produced. It is interesting that Reverend Knight, who was one of the guest speakers at our recent convention, in his message, he paid a tribute to her as a parent talking about her life of power but also how she grew them up with small I remember one of the examples he mentioned is that they didn't have much they eat yam alone and crush chocho as a salting and she raised 15 am I correct Reverend Knight 15 children 14, my pardon, 14 children with small means but with good parenting principles and good discipline. We therefore salute her as not just a woman of prayer but a woman with great parenting skills. It speaks to our level of balance within the church, within the realm of spirituality but also recognizing her social responsibility to her children and to her family. And we also salute her because she was not just a woman of power and just any parent. She was a productive woman. 14 children is an indication of tremendous productivity. But it's not just productivity in quantity, but when we look on the quality of our children, and the quality of the life of those she touched. We salute her for her productivity. We are therefore confident that not just in life we will celebrate her, but will celebrate her legacy. And we believe that there will be many other preachers and teachers and principals and bursars and business people that she would have produced in her own children that that legacy will continue but bishop would want to say something not just to sister ruby and the knight's family but something special about the cobbler church a study need to be commissioned about cobbler cobbler has been maybe one of the most prolific church we have in this country who produce <laughs> tremendous parents and one of the most balanced church in family life men and women and have produced some of our finest preachers today we want to salute sister ruby but also salute the wider cobbler church for the tremendous legacy and the tremendous contribution to the ministry and the life of the new testament church of god we are confident that you don't have to cry and weep and mourn 
as those who have no hope. For we know that absent from us mean that she is present with the Lord. And henceforth, she is resting from all her labor. And we will see her again in that sweet by and by. God bless you on behalf of the Administrative Bishop, Dr. W.A. Blair. I stand here with very mixed feelings this afternoon to eulogize Ruby Joyce Knight. I was worried a while ago that Reverend Plummer thought he was asked to do the eulogy because he was really acting as if that's what he was doing, but I'm glad he saved some for me. I would also like to say to the bereaved family, condolences from my own family, my children. I have sent them the link, so I'm sure they are watching the service now. Hear ye, hear ye, give attention realms. Ye dark abyss of the outer world, we have a storm on our hands. What trouble, master? Questioned one. Beatrice Honeygun is about to give birth and I don't feel so good about this child. But I thought with so many children and the man not standing with her, she would become discouraged and not bother to carry it, interjected another. Well, that did not work, as we hope. And now we have a situation, and I just don't feel right about it, retorted Lucifer. Meanwhile, a parallel conversation was taking place in the eternal glory. Michael, she's here. The child that Beatrice was carrying in her womb has arrived. I have endowed her with boldness and determination of a bull. She will have a difficult life, but I have made her fearless and strong. I have endowed her with inner grace and beauty. She will be a stalwart. She will create unease in the courts of Lucifer, for she will be daring and will give herself to prayer. Her children will be taught the fear of God. Her household, will, she will command to love and to serve me. Her womb will be blessed and she'll bear the burdens and the cares of many before my throne and will not get tired. Let the heavens rejoice! And so it was on that fateful day. It's either the 14th or the 26th of February. Not sure which one. In the second month of our Lord, 1939, in a little community called George North, in North Manchester, the event that agitated hell took place. And Beatrice of the clan of Honigan gave birth to a baby girl and she named her Ruby Joyce. She was given the name Mary by one Hyacinth Mary who raised her as her mother had many. Her early formal education at the Mount Olivet School was limited to a short few years. A fact one would often have to be told rather than discover for yourself. Her limitations never proved a hindrance for her as she would skillfully use them as opportunities to engage others and make it feel like she was doing you a favor. Her life by the standards of the world was a zero. Nothing was going on that would have interested those who write about greatness. Ruby entered the realm of adulthood early in her life, and by the time she met her bow-legged love, she had already the mother of two, and he the father of a few. Ruby, however, had met another man, and this one changed her from sinner to saint, from zero to ten. And it was this relationship that propelled her into her role for which hell had so much fear. It dictated a change in her status from dear friend to wife. And this took place in February 1966 on one of her two birthdays. Her commitment to Jesus Christ did not make her a flowery bed of eaves, as limited financial resources and difficult economic circumstances ensured that she had to literally live by F-A-T-E and F-A-I-T-H. 
You see, this union of Ruby and Ezra produced more children, 12 of them it is believed, to add to those that were already there. For Sister Ruby never heard the slogan, two is better than too many. Somebody told her that I said it was better to have many. So episodes abound of the days when the pot was put on the fire with only the water for cooking available. But God would always make a way. There are days when carbohydrate doubled as protein, but God would always make a way. Mas Ezra would go away on farm work, but his struggles remained like the mountains around Jerusalem. They would not move. Sister Ruby took many jobs. She worked with the principal of Middlesex School. She worked at Knox at the meat shop. She worked with Matron Johnson at Spaulding's. She worked with Miss Tullow at Limit. She worked with Mr. Davis at Mounta. And she worked as cook at NCB, Christian and Spaulding's, BNS in Christian and Frankfield. And those would have eased the economic situation a bit. But when there are over a dozen mouths to feed, these are only a proverbial drop in the bucket. Saibi's life cannot adequately be chronicled in any chronological order. So what I'll do today is that I will highlight the character of the woman who is in that casket. The life of a woman who had taught so many that it has taken us here in Cobbler the better part of a week to celebrate her and it not finish. The people you see gathered here are a testimonial of the impact and the influence of her life and many people could not come, for which I say, thank you, Jesus. I don't know where we would put them. <laughs> Sister Ruby was a spiritual leader in her house, and she raised her children to honor God. Night prayer and morning prayer were a must. And if you value your physique, it was best not to try to scull these important meetings, kneeling around the bed while Mass Ezra was safely covered from head to toe under the sheets. But prayer was taking place, and the prayers were not short, for she prayed for them individually. And in the mornings, no matter how the children felt like they could sleep a little longer, they had to wake up for morning prayer. And at nights when they slept, she would move from boy room to girl room, praying, anointing, and killing mosquitoes. She would also be delivering a few slaps and a warning, set yourself good, if a particular girl was not laying down in a dignified manner. She was in charge of her home and taught her children by instruction and example to honor and respect their spouses. She loved children. My two boys know it. All of these know it. And all of the children in Kabla know it. She loved her so much that the jury is still out on who is guilty of being the favorite. All I know is that David thinks he's the one because Saibi used to take him everywhere with her. There might be some merit to that claim as David, this same David, got saved in a ladies' ministries meeting. And that same David is married to the daughter of one of the persons that Sister Ruby worked with because she used to take David everywhere. But, like I said, the jury is still out, so the case is wide open. She was a good cook and kind. Corn dumpling, the good old pork, stew peas, chicken that she never ate, and a wicked hominy porridge. She loved baking, and her mouth-watering puddings, gizada, greater cake, have been talked about far and wide, and you should have been here Monday night. She was a principled woman. She believed that the standards of the church must be upheld. So whether you are saved or not, some things were a no-no. It is for this reason that Peaches had to stand by the clothesline until her short skirt was dry. And even that did not save it from Sister Ruby. It is why the business of the church was not discussed. Every and anywhere in every circle. You don't talk about church business like that. It is why after evening prayer was complete at 7 o'clock or thereabouts, they were not allowed to engage in no idle talking. And it is why Emil got locked out at 8.30 one night. 
and for a while he had to leave his girl down the road when he was coming up on the hill it is why she was unapologetic about the kind of home she would have God was in charge it is why when it was time to clean the church and sister Ruby was the one to clean all her children were made official cleaners and the tiles were not ceramic she was unwavering and dauntless in her commitment in the service of the Lord she was choir member and for a time her grandson Shane was the unofficial scribe for the choir for the choir as Saibi would volunteer him to write the words of the songs for up to 15 persons she understood Paul's in instruction to Timothy do the work of an evangelist she began at home and every sinner was a field she was fasting leader extraordinaire giving yeoman's leadership in the weekly fasting service and building up others to take over the reins she was president of the women's ministry and gave sterling service in this auxiliary for over 45 years sister ruby gave definition to the title prayer mother it was her ministry it was her calling house prayer hospital prayer church prayer bound and loose prayer salvation prayer deliverance prayer mighty prayer breakthrough prayer phone prayer need a job prayer need the holy ghost prayer as long as you needed prayer sister ruby could be called upon hallelujah thank you jesus glory a grunt or two a moan or two unknown tongues were usual they were not a scarcity in sister ruby's prayer hell trembled for she would repeatedly storm the gates for the jailbreak of a captive soul there was only one problem she would ruffle many feathers for her utterances were not always comfortable but they were spot on for she had high connections and the holy ghost was always talking to her and based on personal experiences and many of you can testify she was hearing from heaven the holy ghost never tell her no lie and she would say that in chat chat but in a tell lie that was her consolation he told her many things it was difficult if not impossible to hold a conversation with her without the holy ghost being mentioned she traveled across many parishes with her prayer and one could wonder where she found all the energy and the time to do what she did and look at stay there, but I look distressed because if I did write everything we wouldn't leave here today so just keep calm <laughs> sister Ruby practiced what she preached so many times her children be threatened with eviction if they never got saved is it any wonder then that of the one dozen children that are alive only one is still not surrendered and he got the injunction another time to serve God from his mother on the day before she left this world it is my prayer that Emil will step up into the fold like his siblings and will meet her again where no storm clouds gather. Sister Ruby lived what it means to be a dedicated servant of God, a fearless warrior whose boldness was frowned upon by many. She was not afraid to declare, Thus saith God. God therefore entrusted her with warnings, messages, prophecies and declarations that only a few could carry she was of the conviction that if you hold office in the church you cannot be ordinary her impact however in spite of all i've said cannot be adequately captured by words on paper but by the hundreds even thousands who have been talking about what she did for them and more so by the crowds that have gathered here when i came on here after 10 the church was already packed and also by the tribute of a little girl no older than six years old who stood up in this church on Monday night and without any promptings on anybody to tell her what to say she spoke about what sister Ruby meant to her she talked about her reaction with her and the playing of cards and the offering of snack and just the calling to each other a little six-year-old girl when a child can say that we can be hypocrites the child cannot be it is also captured in the discipline and accomplishments of her children and grandchildren, the majority of whom are saved and are themselves actively involved in the work of the church. 
the children of God are not immune to trials and sickness. And Sister Ruby had her share of both. And so it was that on the 16th of May, 2018, she was again admitted in the Percy Juno Hospital. Her generosity there never waned. She was in bed. She was not able to move around. But every meal almost that was taken to her, she wouldn't start eating it so soon because there was a lady over there and another one down there who should get some of the food. She would stay there for four weeks, during which many visits were made, many prayers were offered, and flowers sent. Earthly doctors tested, diagnosed, retested, treated, observed, and discussed. All that they knew to do from their medical training. She was then discharged on the 14th day of June. At home, Sister Ruby was given loving care by her family and by her own confession was coming along slowly but surely. Her expressed wish, however, was that she would not be a bother to anybody and she would not suffer. Let me not finish. On Wednesday, July 4, while her son preached in the opening night of the annual convention of the New Testament Church of God, Saibi could not attend. She was not that well. But I believe she stayed home and she prayed. She fought the powers of hell to reach the throne room of her God to make one last petition for her son. God heard and answered her prayer. But I believe she had tasted glory the glory of her new home that she had lost all desire to stay in this sin infested morally decadent and spiritually confused world so on Thursday the 5th of July although she had plans for Claudia and herself to cook four pounds of pig steel that David should have brought the plans changed quickly she called she had Claudia call her prayer partner sister Tabitha who can't be here today because she's not well herself to pray for her and sister T and instructed Claudia to anoint her head and her body with oil later that day an angel visited her room and softly whispered in her ear and Saibi took her leave of this unfriendly world her children had moved her from Night Hill to a better and more suitable home round by West Road she appreciated it she treasured it but it was never really home for her, for her heart had started to pulsate with a new song. I've got me a home. I've got me a home. I've got me a home not made by hands. I've got me a home in heaven on high. I've got me a home way beyond the sky. And thank God, Sister Gooden can't sing because I sing me one, sing it for you. A different travel had been planned for her. She should have left to go back to the States with Omar. But she had seen the sights and sensed the divine presence and heard the sounds of glory and earth could never feel the same again. Her name had been called. Her seat was assigned. Her passport was stamped and she boarded the 4.45 p.m. flight nonstop to glory. All oh, that God would raise up in this church, warriors with the spirit of those he has called home. Let her memory live on in our commitment to ardently seek God like she did. Hell has no reason to rejoice for she has poured into many lives. And all we can do now is to take up in a greater dimension the work she has left behind. On July 5, 2018, Sister Ruby did not die. For Christians never die. They only said goodbye. So Sister Ruby, I call her Rudy Knight, a.k.a. Saibi said goodbye she leaves to follow in her footsteps husband of 52 years Ezra that's the bow legged love children Maureen, Trevor Annie Lee aka Queenie Garfield aka Emily aka Bello who regrettably could not be here David with no aka Rosemary aka Claudia Donovan aka Arville Denise the famous Blackie Marcia aka Sandria Marcia aka Peaches Naomi aka Nikki and Omar no aka <laughs> 25 grandchildren 
six great grandchildren I think it's two sisters one brother and a host of relatives friends and brethren to us who are left behind Saibi says some morning you'll find me touring that city where the Lamb of God is the light you'll find me there on the streets so pretty where the gold is so pure and so bright with Jesus the one who gave life it gave me the victory and led me across the divide some morning you'll find me touring that city where with him I'll ever abide her soul is resting we will go to meet her she will not return to us God bless you Well put together, detailed information. My God, everything that was said is in fact truth. Amen. To Canaan's land, I am on my way. Where the soul never dies. Oh yeah. Where the soul never die, no sad fear will, no tear dim the eye. Where all is love, and the soul never die. No sad fear will, no tear dim the eye. Where all is joy and love, where the soul and the soul never die. No sad, no sad. Church. No, no tears will dim the eye. We all Hallelujah. And joy and love. Where the soul never dies. No sad, no sad. Here we are. Hallelujah. No tears. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout a praise to Almighty God. If God has been good to you, lift your hands and worship Him. Shout another praise to Almighty God. Hallelujah. You may be seated if you can. Hallelujah. No sad farewell. No tears will dim the eye. My name is Steve Hepburn. And I will be one of the moderators, as Bishop Gooden would have said earlier. On the behalf of my immediate and extended family, I want to extend my heartfelt sympathy and condolences to the Knight's family. Katie and Mikhail and Mikida would want to be here, but due to prior plans that they had for other countries they had to leave however I am here amen I want to say to you that like others I am the son that Saibi did not give birth to and a lot of people know that by now 
And I can recount numerous occasions when the same David, the same Sandra, would have seen their mother and said, Saibi, we are warning you for the last time. Left out a brother Steve company. Saibi would have responded because when I was at Cobbler Church, everybody know that's where I used to sit. And I have to sit beside Sister Ruby. And some persons would say they know why. And so Saibi would have responded, Uno left me. Me couldn't not tell him if he left me company. So, <laughs> so we were spiritual, spiritual partners as we worked together here or worshipped here at Cobbler. At this time, we'll be having the ministry of the Spaulding's New Testament Church of God Choir. Right after that, the Cobbler New Testament Church of God Choir will minister. Then immediately after the ministry of the Cobbler Choir, the next voice you'll be hearing is that of Bishop Clement Clark, former pastor of this church and who happens to be my father-in-law by what he told me. <laughs> The resemblance is there, so I don't question it. I just work with it. <laughs> so, please worship at that time. And at the time for Bishop Clark, we'll ask the congregation to stand. And you will receive God's servant. <laughs>
to recognize all the members of the executive council tremendous galaxy of ministers and their spouses my brothers and sisters I greet you in Jesus name I must pause to tender condolences to the bereaved family and church and community because indeed a giant a champion a monument has gone home to be with the Lord and you know I didn't even know if I would get anything to do at the funeral, but I know I had to be here. <laughs> but thanks to Bishop Knight, he had to push me in the shaft. But I, since I'll be so short, I think it's reasonable for me to ask Marsha to say a word. Marsha is here, and I would have asked um, her to sing, but I can't do that. <laughs> but she's here. Sheldon is here. Stand up, Sheldon. And Shanil, who is not around, has sent her condolences. Come, Marsha. So she's taking two minutes of my time. My brothers and sisters, members of the bereaved family, all, I greet you well. It's an honor and a privilege to be in this homegoing service. And as I told Sheldon, when we we're coming, we we're going to a convention. You know, I fell into Sister Ruby's hands in 1993. And what wonderful hands I fell into. I am one of those who has been the recipient of her prayers and her kindness. And my children, Chanel was born, she's one of those hands that Chanel was born into as well because she was born here. And that's one of the homes that my children went to. And that's where they got the rose corn and different things that they told me about and that they treasure to this day. And Saibi prayed for them and they imitated her. Because when it came to church, Nobody could jump like Saibi. She had a special brand. And after service, I would have to put up with that same Dermont over there 
and Sheldon taking on Saibi because they never tried to imitate anybody else but it was Saibi and I had to watch them trying to perfect her moves but I want to say thank God for her because my husband and I are alive today because that woman heard from God and was willing to pray her song might have ended but her mel the melody lingers in our hearts I will not say goodbye I will simply say good night Saibi see you in the morning thank you so much dear <clears throat> she's still my sweet smiling soulful satisfied spouse <laughs> my brothers and sisters as she was saying about Saibi and you know I can't forget that we're in the house over there and one morning before we got up we heard some sounds at the side of the house where the car was parked and you know we pull away the curtain and look what was happening because we didn't believe that thief could be coming in at that time in the morning and so we when we look we saw a group of women surround the vehicle and so we went out and joined them and so when they were through they told us that they didn't want to wake us up but Sabi had gotten a word and, and a vision that she saw the car flat out um, you know something press it out I don't tell these things good Marsha good and that I don't know why she didn't tell you <laughs> and so they gathered and they prayed and they left and I went to school Bethel I worked at Bethel then and the evening when I came home I said Marsha look at the back of the car because when I went to pick her up I showed her that I was past I was in town passing one of the supermarkets and one of the delivery trucks was backing out and didn't see me and so was coming right into it and I just passed just before it could impact the vehicle. Prayer works. Prayer works. My brothers and sisters, everything that we have heard so far about Saibi is true. But my brothers and sisters, notwithstanding all that was said it would be wrong for to leave um, anyone with the mistaken idea that our good works are the basis for our confidence that she's now with the Lord our works are never able to win God's favor or to earn eternal life but they nevertheless should accompany our faith. I want to, for the next few minutes, to draw your attention to the basis for our comfort and joy in the face of death. Listen to these words spoken by Simeon when Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple. Yes, I know it's not Christmas. <laughs> now there was in Jerusalem a man named Simeon who was righteous and devout looking for the restoration of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ so directed by the Spirit 
Simeon came into the temple courts and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary according to the law Simeon took him in his arms and blessed him saying now according to your word sovereign Lord permit your servant to depart in peace for mine eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all people a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel so I've not lost it at all it is a funeral sermon my brothers and sisters the occasion is the presentation of our Lord by Mary and Joseph there as they presented their firstborn son in the temple Mary and Joseph were there to present their son and to offer a sacrifice as the law, law of Moses prescribed while Mary and Joseph and their firstborn son were in the temple two people recognized the baby Jesus as Israel's long awaited Messiah the names of these two persons are Simeon and Anna we know that Anna was an old woman because Luke tells us so he says in verse 36 there was also a prophet prophetess Anna the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher she was very old having been married to her husband for seven years after his death until sorry until his death she had lived as a widow since then for 84 years she never left the temple worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day that sound like Saidi at that moment she came up to them and began to give thanks to God and to speak about the child to all who were waiting for the redemption of Israel my brothers and sisters here was a woman who in Luke's words was very old while we cannot be absolutely certain of Anna's age she had to have been at least 84 years according to the text she was either a widow of 84 years or she was a widow who was 84 at that time either way Luke has committed the unpardonable sin he has given us a woman's age <laughs> but my brothers and sisters that's not our focus at this time our focus is Simeon nearly everyone assumes that he too is elderly he may very well have been old I believe he was but it is noteworthy that while Anna's age is given to us, Simeon's age is not. Why not? I think we can deduce that because Simeon's age was not important to Luke, he didn't bother to tell it. What is important is what Luke does clearly communicate. Luke tells us that Simeon was ready to die. Know that he had seen Jesus. Simeon had been waiting to see the Savior. God's Spirit had informed him that he would not die until he had seen the Messiah. As soon as Simeon sees Jesus, he says, Now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace for mine eyes. Hallelujah. 
Luke wants his readers to know that Simeon was ready to die. Not because he was old, but because he had seen the, the, the Savior. Simeon is now ready to die. No matter what his age might be. No, being ready to die is not a matter of one's age. But it's rather a matter of one's relationship to Jesus Christ by faith. Hallelujah. Those who see, who know, Sister Ruby know that she was ready to die. Is a woman who knew her God and she was ready to die. She was not ready to die because she was older, because of her health. Yes, we know that she was in the hospital for a while. But my brothers and sisters, Sister Ruby knew her God. Oh, hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, you see, I, I grew up, I think, maybe in the, at the zenith of Sister Ruby's ministry as a prayer mother. As a matter of fact, I believe when I was here, she was the de facto prayer, um, prayer mother leader because most of the thing she would be at the helm. So she knew her God. And you know, I couldn't help but but I, I, I said to myself that Saibi, after having looked on the church, the Kabla New Testament Church of God, and see what God had done to it, and having listened to her son preach at national convention, she said, Lord, take me. My eyes have seen the king. So you can take me now. Good God, the next morning, the news came that Saibi had gone because she heard that Avil Mashup Convention. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, my brothers and sisters, she, she could feel comfortable because she had seen some of what I believe she had looked for, prayed for, looked for. She saw it come to fruition and come to fulfillment. How can this be? How can trusting in Jesus Christ cause one to welcome death rather than to dread it? The answer to this question is found in Genesis. When God created Adam and Eve, he placed them in the garden of Eden. God warned Adam that they must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. But God said if they did, they would certainly die. Adam and Eve, as you know, disobeyed. And the result was both physical and spiritual death. But God in his grace promised that he would provide a cure for her role in the, in the fall of mankind. God pronounced a curse upon Eve. She and all women after her would bring forth children in pain. But through the curse of sin in childbirth, Eve would bring forth a child who would save people from their sins and from the curse of death. Oh, hallelujah, one of Eve's offspring would be the cure for the curse of death. This coming one would strike a fatal blow to Satan by crushing his head while Satan would just bruise her, his heel. The coming seed, oh, hallelujah, of the woman is the Savior, the Messiah, the Deliverer for whom every New Testament saint expects. Waited. This coming Savior was the Messiah whom Simeon longed to see. This coming Savior was Jesus Christ and through him we have life undiminished. My brothers and sisters, I want us to know that Saidi felt comfortable to die because she had that relationship with her Messiah. Through, oh hallelujah, my brothers and sisters, God provided a remedy for the cur cur curse of death uh, by making death the cure as well as the curse. The coming Savior was the perfect sinless Son of God. He had no sin of his own, yet he took upon all, uh, himself all our sins on the cross. He died in the sinner's place, bearing the penalty 
penalty for sin and the curse of death when he cried on the cross it is finished the transaction was complete the songwriter said this done the great transaction is done I am my Lord and he is mine he drew me and I followed on charm to confess the voice divine happy day happy day when Jesus washed my sins away somebody say he was the offering and the offerer he was the shepherd and the lamb he was the priest and the sacrifice oh, oh hallelujah and he cried on the cross the Bible say it was a loud cry it was the cry of a victim Poor. Not the cry of a dead martyr, but it was the cry of a victor. It is finished. Oh, hallelujah. The great transaction is done and man can be delivered. That was a crushing blow to the head of the serpent. But God also raised Jesus Christ from the dead. My brothers and sisters, you see, they couldn't keep him down. Oh, hallelujah. They couldn't keep the Savior down because if they kept him down Christianity would not have been but thank God he arose the Sunday morning from the dead oh somebody said they cut down the rose of Sharon but it bloomed again in three days they cut down the lily of the valley but in three days it was wax and white and flowing before the people they cut on the tree of renown but it sprouted again in three days they couldn't keep him down oh hallelujah and because they couldn't keep him down they couldn't keep Saibi down we can't keep Saibi down because one of these days we are going to oh hallelujah we are going to um, follow in the train the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the first fruits of them that slept so all of us are in a procession just as though we are in a procession to the grave the children of God are in a procession to the resurrection from the dead I want you to know that because of the resurrection we have the assurance of eternal life we have forgiveness of sin and oh hallelujah my brothers and sisters does the Bible tells us in Ephesians in Ephesians chapter 4 I think the Bible tells us uh, of the power to us words in Christ who believe when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and dominion and might and every name that is named not only in this world but in the world to come and has put to all things under his feet we have Satan under his feet Saibi knew that no devil in hell could stop Saibi because she knew that the devil was under her feet because God had given her victory through the resurrection from the dead hallelujah hallelujah so all those who trust place their trust in Jesus Christ as their savior no longer fear death we don't need to worry about death oh God almighty death has terrified and terrorized so many people but Jesus Christ has taken out this thing out of death and kneeled to the cross of Calvary oh hallelujah you know what the scripture says what what then shall we say about these things if God be for us who can be against us indeed he did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not along with him freely 
give us all things who will bring any charge against God's elect it is God who justifies who is the one who will who will condemn Christ is the one who died my brothers and sisters who is raised who is at the right hand of God and who is uh, interceding for us who shall separate us from the love of Christ will trouble our distress our persecution our famine our nakedness our danger our peril our sword as it is written for your sakes we encounter death all the day long we were considered as sheep to the slaughter he says no Paul continues he said no in all these things we oh hallelujah we have come we are more than conquerors through him that loved us for I am convinced he said I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor power nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus oh hallelujah nothing can stop Saibi now oh hallelujah the devil should have killed her when he had the chance but no Saibi is gone as a matter of fact Saibi is better than we are oh hallelujah she is with the Lord right now never the will the devil can tempt her again never any trouble again Saibi is gone to be with the Lord she's in a better place right now oh hallelujah so Paul continues now this is what I am saying brothers and sisters flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable he said listen I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed so he says for this perishable shall put on imperishable imperishability and this mortal shall put on immortality now when this perishable shall put on imperishability and his mortal shall put on immortality then the saying that is written will happen death has been swallowed up in victory oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory oh hallelujah the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ therefore my beloved brethren oh be steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor shall not be in vain in the Lord. Say be work diligently and God has prepared a reward for her. Death will not have the last laugh my brothers and sisters. Death too shall die. Oh hallelujah. The Bible said the last enemy that shall be destroyed will be death. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dismantled we have a building from God a house not made with hand that is reserved in heaven for us. Salby has that now my brothers and sisters. It is said that it is said that former president early president of the United States John Quincy Adams when he was old and feeble somebody sent and asked him 
John Quincy Adams, how are you doing? He said, John Quincy Adams is well, sir. He says, the tent that he is living in is old and dilapidated. He has words that the owner will soon be asking him to vacate it. But John Quincy Adams is well, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want everybody to know that Sister Saibi is well. The body was a little dilapidated and old. But Saibi is well, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That has no dominion over God's people. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, one of these days uh, we are going to break the tomb uh, and we're going to come out with power. Oh, hallelujah. The, oh, and we are going to be changed. Uh, my brothers and sisters, the songwriter said this robe of flesh uh, shall drop and rise uh, to seize the everlasting prize uh, and shout while passing through the hill. Farewell! Farewell, we shall have a new body. Praise God. Oh, can you imagine one of these days we're gonna have a body? No diabetes, no oh hallelujah. The big C oh, will be out no more because there'll be no graves on the hillside of glory. Oh, but we shall have a new body. The songwriter said, Praise the Lord, I shall have a new life. Oh God, I'm looking forward to that time when this robe of flesh shall drop and rise and we will seize the everlasting prize. Don't worry about Saibi. Hallelujah! Saibi is in a better place, in a body that is imperishable. That's where she is. Hallelujah! Somebody worship God in the house. Somebody worship Him! Hallelujah! I'm closing. I'm closing. Hallelujah! Oh God Almighty. Hallelujah. The devil terrorizes us with death. But one of these days, Rev. One of these days. Tell somebody one of these days. Terrorize us with death, but one of these days. One of these days. Hallelujah. God Almighty. The tomb will be broken. Hallelujah. The dead in Christ shall rise and we shall be with him somebody bless God in the house hallelujah oh God I feel blessed in the house hallelujah death can't hold my body down when the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise no grave somebody said no grave no grave can hold my body down. God bless him. Hallelujah. I close. It was Saibi's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that give us the assurance. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, you know, as I thought about this thing, I said, I said, Saibi, listen, uh, Reverend Knight, <laughs> listen, Bishop Knight, our son preach, and kick a bucket the next morning. She glad, oh, hallelujah. She feels satisfied. She said, my eyes have seen. So me going home. I'm going to go on. Wrong things. 
run things up come Lord. I do my best go and run things but I go on home I go on home I go on home oh God somebody help say hallelujah say, say carry on carry on Carry on, carry on. But I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone because my eyes have seen glory of God manifested. Hallelujah! Glory! Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God, oh, God. Hallelujah! Never a woman pray like that. Good God. I don't think I go anywhere and see anybody pray. Like Saibi. So only maybe in St. Anne's Bay where we, I met Sister Magian. But may I tell you, oh God, Saibi was a champion of champions. And, and as I close, I tell you, sometimes as the pastor of the church, I have to wonder if the prayer mothers, them never have more authority than the council members. It's not because of any fault of the council members. That's what I'm saying. I had an excellent council. But the prayer mothers just stand up before you. Oh God Almighty. Hallelujah. The prayer mother was an institution in the church. And you couldn't miss it. Once you came to Kabla New Testament Church of God. And a side used to run things. Oh hallelujah. So it was not old age. A sickness which enables one to live joyfully and be confident of eternal life. It is trusting Jesus Christ as the one who bore the curse of death in order to provide the cure for the dread of death as the penalty for our sin. That is why we can rejoice with Saibi in Saibi's death because we know she has gone to be with our Lord. As you consider your own death, because I can't go without say this, because somebody's supposed to get saved at Saibi's funeral. As you consider your own death, do you do so with fear? Are in faith. If death causes you to fear, I urge you, like Simeon, like Saibi, like so many others, place your trust and faith in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and the assurance of eternal life. Just as God raised Jesus from the dead. He will also raise you up to eternal life. Oh, hallelujah. Death need no longer be viewed as something we dread, but rather can be welcome as our deliverance. Death has ushered Saibi into the presence of God. May you experience the calm assurance of Simeon, of all the saints, of Sister Saibi, finally of the Apostle Paul. In 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 he says, I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me on that day and not to me only but unto all them who love his appearing the Lord the righteous judge oh hallelujah can I close by telling the people of God that the wheel of justice will turn right one of these days oh God we can't have justice nowhere nowhere we can't have justice but I want to let you know Hallelujah. Yes. That Herod and John the Baptist can't go to the same place. That Jezebel and Elijah can't go to the same place. 
Hallelujah. I want you to know that justice will turn right one day. And those who are telling us uh, that they don't have to be um, Christians to be in heaven, I'm sorry for you. Somebody said the other day that as long as they find one Jamaican I held them good. <laughs> because they're going to find a way to come out of hell. But I want you to know that the Bible said the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And what uh, is important to me is that the Lord himself so no backdoor deal, no grease palm, no sugar under the table. Everything will be right oh hallelujah and the wheels of justice will turn right amen could the church say amen? amen powerful word from the servant of God amen death is real death is real amen somebody Hebrew 927 it is appointed unto man once to die and after death comes the judgment. Wonderful. Amen. If Saibi was here, Saibi would have pawned. Those are Saibi's words. So if you, you hear me use some terms, it's a cobbler term and Saibi's term. Saibi would have pawned one or two of the prayer mothers and they would be up here a long time praying for Bishop Clark. That's the Saibi that we know. So after you're through preaching, no preacher preaching cobbler. And Saibi and the prayer mothers doesn't take you and pray for you. Our prayers be with you, sir, as you continue to preach the word of God. Amen. Somebody just put your hands together one more time for the servant of God. There are some other ministers that came in after. Reverend Samuel, Stevenson Samuels, the pastor of the Escarpment Road and Sister Samuels. At this time, I'm going to pause though and ask all the ministers, all the pastors who are here from this denomination and perhaps other denomination outside of the New Testament Church of God, seated on the platform and your spouse and you're in the congregation to stand so that this crowd, this body of people can see the support that have been poured in from the ministry this funeral. I'm going to ask you to stand wherever you are, wherever you are. Pastors. Wow. Some are on the outside. Amen, somebody. God bless you. Thank you. Wonderful. You may be seated. Somebody praise the name of the Lord. Almighty ah, long way, Lord. Mighty long way, mighty long way, Lord. Mighty long way, mighty long, mighty long. Look where you brought me from. A mighty, come on, church. Hey, mighty long way, Lord. Mighty, ooh, 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 mighty long. Ha, 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 mighty long way. Woo. Hey. Come on, church. Oh, mighty long way, Lord. Lord, I mighty long. Wow. Oh, mighty long way. Glory. We send you to the portals. 
We send you to the heaven's gate. Oh, go through, Saibi. Go in. Go in, Saibi. Go through. I, my dealer, a far. My, go through. Go in. My dealer. Wow, wow. Ooh. Mighty, yes, sir. Mighty Lamb, oh, Mighty Lamb, Mighty Lamb, save me. Hey. Somebody worship the Lord. Somebody worship the Lord. Somebody worship the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody show glory. Show glory. Somebody say mighty long way. Look at your neighbor say afar. In a jump you can turn with us afar. Afar for where you come from. Side journey long. 50 odd years in the church, 70 odd years on earth, but look where you brought me from. Sit down in the Holy Ghost. The prayer, the prayer mothers are coming. My God. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Oh, somebody across this auditorium, raise your hands. Praise the Lord. Worship the Lord, church. Yes, sir. Pray. These are the prayer mothers that prayed many of us through. Yes, sir. If Sister Ruby was here, she would be saying, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise your honor and praise God. That's what she would be saying. Raise your hand and praise the Lord. We are here to worship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. This evening, we are standing here as a part of the prayer mothers on behalf of Sister Mrs. Ruby Knight, a pioneer, a hero for the New Testament Church of God throughout Jamaica and Cabla. Sister Mrs. Ruby Knight, a prayer mother of the Cabla New Testament Church of God, also the community of Cabla. Sister Ruby is highly respected, honored, Hallelujah. and looked upon with dignity. Amen. I met Sister Ruby in March 1973 
when I came to reside in Cobbler, getting more and more acquainted with Sister Ruby, I could see some fine qualities within her, such as her devotedness, her love for God, and the things of God. Sister Ruby will be remembered in a beautiful way. She's all, she always had sound words of advice to give. Sister Ruby was a mother to every person, not only to her children. She left a mark on each life that she met, whether young or old. There's no difference. She's a true worshiper, no foolishness. When it's worship time, and I quote, I come, you come for worship, shake her head, stop until she felt satisfied with the climax that worship has reached. Her prayers touch hearts. When she starts to pray, you better wake up for she must set things ablaze. When Sister Ruby gets rough in the spirit, she would grab her dress and just start ringing. It's like she had ring clothes. Sometimes we have to shift and give her way. That is Sister Ruby night. Praise God. Sister Ruby did not, Sister Ruby not know what was going to be, sorry. Sister Ruby did not know what it is to be selfish. She cooked the nicest chicken, yet she never eat chicken. She baked the number one potato pudding, cornmeal pudding, coconut drops, greater cake and toto. She was jack of all trade. Sister Ruby was never too busy to pray. Whether she pick it up in the spirit or you call her, she would be there to pray. To pray you out and through your situation. Sister Ruby's entire life was about church and role in God has given her to do. Sister Marine was the eldest of all. And when she's called, Sister Ruby would go back and say, Marine, take care till me come. And got from her missionary journey, she took her over hills and rough valleys. Most of the time she went to pray for one person, but more than one ended up being prayed for, as many persons love to be prayed for by Sister Ruby, a strong discerner. No wonder her children are so blessed, all because she didn't fail to be a blessing to others, not to mention her years of dedication to prayer and fasting, out of which many are testifying to the miracles wrought through the prayers of Sister Ruby. I can recall one instant in the many when Sister Ruby called out young sisters and put bags on their shoulder, book and pen in the bag. Today, they are qualified teachers, married women, and serving God. Amen. That is Sister Ruby work. Praise God. Time would not permit me to tell you about Sister Ruby and the good examples she said. Sister Ruby's favorite song that she always quote was, if I walk in the pathway of duty, if I work till the close of the day, then I know there are joys that awaits me when I've gone 
the last mile of the way. Sister Ruby, walk good. We love and we'll see you over on the other side. You have fought a good fight. You kept the faith. And you have finished your course. We will forever remember you. Sleep on, beloved. Can I just say this, that Sister Samuel, her friend in America, and Ellen G, Sandra friend, and my children too, they send their condolences, saying that they are sorry they could not be present here, but their prayers are with you all. God bless you. We now sing, Sister. I've been a Christian servant of Jesus Christ my King And though I'm growing weary, this message still I bring Wonderful, wonderful. The prayer mothers of the Cobbler New Testament Church of God. I, they had the prayer mothers privilege. That's the prayer mothers. Thank you, musicians. They have the prayer mothers privilege to talk about their. I, I, I just said to Bishop Robinson, guess what? Those are Saibi Kumbalos in Jamaica. Saibi, you hear me tell you earlier, I'm going to use some of Saibi's terminologies. So these are some of Saibi's Kumbalo. So they have the, the Kumbalos privilege. <laughs> and because they have been praying for me, I didn't want to stop them, disturb them. So they start praying against me. So let me allow them to continue. Mr. Paul Lynn is here. My program, our moderator's program, a little bit different from yours. He's here, board chairman of the Spaulding's High School. He's going to be coming at this time to do his tribute. And it, they say it's always dangerous to put the microphone in the hands of a pastor and a politician. <laughs> 